I'm Chef Jennifer Cabillos, and today we're going to be talking about piping skills. I'm going to be demoing how to pipe in both buttercream and melted chocolate or ganache, which are a little bit of different styles. I'm also going to show you how to make a paper cornet, which is a type of piping bag made from parchment paper that is much easier to have fine tuning and control over than a really large plastic bag. Start off by making a paper parchment bag, sometimes called a cornet. And to do that, I need to have some parchment that is in triangles. So I have this half sheet of parchment here, and I wanna turn it into a triangle. It's not gonna be perfect because this piece isn't square, but I don't like uh, to turn it into a square because it kind of wastes a little bit of time and paper. So I'm just gonna take this edge, pull it towards me, making sure that these two lines are parallel to each other. And you can see how this makes two triangles. They'll each have a little bit of a flat side, but that's okay because we'll fix that when we make our bag. So I'm just gonna push this, create a crisp line here. And I want that line to be really sharp so that it's really, when I cut it, it's very sharp. I want really nice smooth lines. So I'm using the side of my knife to just make that really crisp. Now that that's done, I'm gonna take my knife and just put it in the corner of the bag. I'm gonna saw gently and just push away from this corner. You can also do this with a serrated knife. Now you can see that I have two equal triangular pieces. We're gonna start off with one. So I want this really long side to be away from me. Um, and I always wanna take this corner and put that on the interior of my bag. So I'm gonna start with this corner. I'll take it and make it so that this line points straight to the corner of my bag. Now I'm just gonna flip this inwards so you can still see that same line pointing straight towards the corner, but it, now it's creating my cone. You can see on the inside. So with that cone, I'll take my exterior and I'm gonna wrap it around and then pull it down. And all three of those lines, well, those two lines should be facing right towards me. You can see that there's a little bit of a gap between these two layers of parchment and that my tip isn't super sharp right now. So I'm gonna adjust my fingers in the interior of the bag, moving these lines in and out a little bit until that crease goes away and until the tip of this bag is nice and sharp and pointy. Once I have both of those things, I can lay my bag down here and I'm just gonna fold all these corners inside. And I'm gonna continue to fold them, pushing all the way to the edge until my bag can hold its own shape. So you, this is usually three or four times. So now you can see that my bag is kind of maintaining that cone shape. I still have a nice crisp tip here and I can open it up like this. So now that we have our bag, we wanna go ahead and fill it. With chocolate, I'm not gonna put a tip in here at all. I'm gonna pipe right from here because I want it to be very delicate. But with buttercream, I'm gonna add a number three, a taco tip to this. So I have my bag. I'm gonna tear off just the last part of the tip just enough to let my metal tip come through here. If I tear it off too much, the tip will come completely out of the bag. Now I'm gonna take my number three Ateco, slide it inside, and just make sure that it comes out the end of my bag. Now I need my buttercream. So you can see here, I have some Italian buttercream. Before using buttercream, I always give it a good mix to release any excess air bubbles, particularly if this is really cool, it's gonna hold a lot of air. This is gonna help me when I'm piping to not have any gaps, to be able to make really nice, smooth lines. So now that this is nice and smooth, I'm ready to put it in my bag. So I'm just gonna grab a good bit of buttercream on my spatula, put it inside my bag, and I'm gonna push it right against the edge. I wanna really refrain from getting it along the edges so that I can keep all that buttercream inside of the bag. 
So you really don't want to fill this more than halfway full. Usually I do around a third. That way I can have a lot of delicacy in my piping and it will fit easily in my hand. So I want to take this line and put it downwards. You can see if I try and fold this way, this paper comes up and I don't want that. So I'm going to put it downwards and fold away from that line. I'm going to push all that buttercream towards the edge until I can see the metal coming out of the end here. And then I'm just going to fold this up kind of like you're, you're rolling a tube of toothpaste. I'll fold these corners in and once more. And this is what goes into the palm of your hand. The palm is really going to be kind of the gas for this situation. It um, controls how much buttercream is coming out of your bag. So if I press really hard, a lot's coming out. If I press just a little, it's coming out really smoothly. Um, <clears throat> so you want this to feel comfortable in your hand. If you have larger hands, you can probably fit more. If you have smaller hands like me, you don't want to overfill your bag. It'll make it very difficult to have control while you're piping. When you're getting started piping, you want to start with a guide. This guide is going to help you stay in control. So you can see that I have this printed paper that's going to give me some designs that I can start by tracing. Um, I've put it in a page protector. This way I can pipe on top of it. I can use my spatula to scrape it off, put it back in my bag and start over again for practice. I'm going to start by piping a bead border. That's what these dots are for, to make sure that I'm piping really nice, um, well-spaced little beads. So you can see that I need to be um, not too close. If you're too close, it's just gonna push outwards. And if I'm too far away, it's just gonna go in little spools. So I wanna be about the distance, the size of my tip, that's how far away I wanna be from my paper. So I'm gonna get nice and close like this squeeze, stop squeezing, and then pull to the side. If I don't pull to the side, I'm going to get a little mountain peak. And I want something that's going to be really nice and round. So squeeze, stop squeezing, pull to the side. And I'll just continue to do that. I want these to get just big enough to touch each other and then stop. When you're first doing this, take your time. Make sure you're getting the right size and shape. And then as you start to get them perfectly, then you can work on speed and going quickly. You want to get the technique first and then pick up the speed. This is the kind of thing you'll use to do top and border bottoms on your cakes. Now that you have the border, we're going to look at doing straight lines. This can be a little bit tricky because a lot of times when you pull buttercream across, um, if you pull too hard, it can break. So we want to go in a nice, slow, consistent pace. I'm going to actually touch here to anchor to make sure my buttercream is held down. And then I'll lift this up. Really important to have consistent pressure. If I'm pressing really hard and then less hard and then really hard and then less hard, this line is going to get thicker and thinner and thicker and thinner. But if I have really nice consistent pressure, then I'll have a really smooth even line. You can see how I'm actually lifting my tip up here, which I usually don't do and letting it fall down. That's so I know I can put my line exactly where I want it to go. Then when I get towards the end of the line, I'm going to touch down, stop pressing, and push back the other way. So I can have really nice, smooth lines. Here we have a nice little design. And this requires us to go in multiple directions at once. Just to get your bearings, it might help if without pushing, you sort of trace over it before piping at all to let yourself kind of get the idea of where your hand's going to go. Now, since I have longer stretches here, I'm going to lift my bag higher there and anywhere where it's going to cross, I don't want it to be super tall. So I'm going to go closer to the paper here. 
So I'm going to anchor by pushing here, making sure that it's stuck. Lift my bag and just let it fall out along that line. Then when I go to the cross backwards, I'm going to get closer. I can lift up. When I go to cross again, close back in. Maintaining really consistent pressure. You can see I had an air bubble in my bag and that's what caused this break right here. It's going to happen every once in a while and you can fill that in just by gently connecting your lines. Now we can start looking at writing. So I've printed out some different common things here that I'm going to write on. Um, you probably want to adjust your tip size depending on how thick the writing is. For something like this, I might want a one or two tip. For something like this, I might want a four. So the size of the tip is really going to um, contribute to how thick or thin that line is going to be. I always want to anchor at the top of my lines, starting here, touching, and then lifting up slightly to come around. Anytime I change directions, I want to stop my pressure and then come back in the other direction. If you don't stop your pressure, you'll get a buildup right there. Stop pressing and then move back in the other direction. Stop pressing. Making really thin, even strokes. Now we move to the next letter. So you can see when I pull up too much, how it just kind of drops wherever it wants to go. If I pull up too high, then it's going to give me really unevenness like this. If I push in too far, it's actually going to push that buttercream outwards and not look very even. You can see it's really thin and jagged on this side where I pushed in too much. So just a really small gap between you and your paper will give you much smoother lines. So here's an example of pushing too low, of pulling too far away. But if you keep a really consistent measurement away, then you'll have really nice crisp letters. Here's an example on my congratulations of something that's much thicker. This is going to be easier for you to start out with. You might want to start off with chunkier letters like this because they're a little bit easier. And afterwards, you can come back, cross your T's, and dot your I's. Once you're finished feeling good about tracing designs, you can begin to freehand them. Your borders, you can start to do on cakes or maybe just on unlined paper. But when you start out doing, doing writing, you want to use something lined to help you gauge the height and size of your letters so that they're nice and consistent, just like whenever you were in grade school learning how to write for the first time. So now I'm going to start off by writing happy birthday. I'm 
my smaller letters will only come up to the first line while my capital letters will come up to the top line. This is going to help you get started. And then once you feel very comfortable writing with lines, you can start to begin to write on something with no lines. So I'm just gonna use this parchment paper so I don't get it on my tablecloth. And <clears throat> I can start to have a little bit more fluidity and kind of flair to my writing. I'm going to have a lot more swirling going on here. But I'm still trying to maintain really consistent letter sizes. And as you get better and better, you'll be able to start to try and do different fonts or different designs and really develop your own style. You can see this is a really swirly cursive. Um, we can also do this in print using that straight line technique of anchoring and lifting. And you can do a number of different fonts this way. If you want a font that has multiple thicknesses, like more of a script, you can press firmer in areas and then press less in other areas to get different designs. gotten a hang of piping with buttercream, we can begin piping with melted chocolate. I have some chocolate here. It's really important that you don't melt it above 115 degrees. Um, it'll start to get, or sorry, above 125 to 130 degrees because that will scorch it and start to make it thick. Um, this right here is about 95. Um, ideally, this is tempered chocolate. But when you're doing writing, you don't have to be quite as concerned. Um, I definitely prefer piping with chocolate over ganache because I feel like you get a little more control. I prefer it over piping with um, buttercream as well because it's much more delicate. So I have my bag with a really nice sharp tip to it. I'm going to go ahead and add my chocolate to my bag. You can see that I haven't filled it up very much. I put even less chocolate than I do buttercream because you can do a lot of writing. I want to take this little bit of chocolate here and just push it in. Same thing, looking for this line, I'm going to put it downwards and push all my excess into the end so I'm not getting air bubbles. Then I can start to fold this bag away, fold these corners in, continue to fold, and I put that in the crook of my hand. So I'm going to test this really quick and see, you can see it's very difficult for me to push the chocolate out, which means that my tip is a little bit too small. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut just the smallest little bit off and then I can test it again. And that's a really good size for me. If it's too thick, my letters will be really chunky and hard. 
I'm going to start doing some filigrees. These are typical decorations for really intricate pastries or pedophores. And you can see this guide actually takes you all the way through the process. So um, <clears throat> just like I did when drawing straight lines with buttercream, I want to anchor at the end and then lift my bag and kind of let it go um, so I can guide the process. I'm going to anchor here, lift my bag, and really let that follow the line that's there. And I can go to the next one starting with the step I just did and then moving on to the following step and actually this bag is a little bit thick for what I'm wanting you can see that it's starting to close in and it's not really delicate I probably should have cut it slightly smaller can see how with a smaller tip I'm getting a lot more definition here. And you can continue practicing those. I'm going to show you some of the other shapes here. So this is just a series of concentric ovals. We start with one taller oval. And with all of these, we're going from the top and then getting closer to the bottom while making our design wider. Ideally, you don't really want to stop in between circles. You want this to be a nice, constant, fluid motion. This one is just with a triangle. So I start with a nice tall skinny triangle and each following triangle will get smaller and wider. And then finally, we have a modified triangle shape where we're going to be looping outwards and then back inwards. These are the kinds of intricate filigree designs you often see on the pedophore glacé. You can easily practice these at home in your free time. If you do this just 15 to 20 minutes a day, really, really focusing on um, what techniques are working really well for you and what things you really need to try and practice more on, um, you'll really see great improvement. Now we're gonna move on from there to some more continuous designs. I like to do things like this to really challenge myself about keeping my pace. So longer items really make you focus on your handwork and on feeling the continual pressure in your palm. So I'm gonna lift up and just focus on following that line. Anywhere you're changing directions, you're gonna anchor down, touch, and then go back the other way. When I change directions again, I'm gonna gently touch and then go in the opposite direction. Touch, 
opposite direction. When you first start doing this, you might feel some discomfort in your hand or your palm from constantly squeezing like this. It's pretty normal. It's just because you're not using those particular muscles a lot. And once you get used to it and do it more and more, that will subside as your hands get stronger. Sorry, my motion sensor lights just cut off on us. We have one nice continuous design. We've gotten good at continuous piping. We can start to do some lettering with chocolate. This is better for items with thin lines, more like this. Remember, when we go to a different direction, we want to anchor by gently releasing the pressure and touching down to the paper before moving in another direction. Move in another direction. Touch down. And when I end off, I'm also going to stop pressure and lift up. You can see how much more thin and delicate this is than the buttercream process. And I get to the end, touch down and lift up. Notice that I'm holding my piping bag straight up and down. Now you can see how this is moving this way. It means I have something stuck in the tip of my bag. Instead of continuing on, I wanna gently pinch it and pull that chunk of chocolate through before continuing to pipe. Now chocolate borders, unlike buttercream borders, aren't piped directly onto the corner of the cake. They're piped more on the top flat side as a decoration. You can take something really simple and by adding multiple layers, make it a lot more interesting. So we'll start off by something simple, just really nice, even loops. We we'll wanna space them nice and large, making sure all of our circles are the same size and our scallops are the same size. Very simple, nice, easy thing to start with. Then we can start to make it more complicated by adding another layer. We're gonna do the exact same thing, but invert that layer. Consistency is really the key here. And this is another thing where if you are on lined paper, it's gonna help you get more even spacing. Now we can take the same similar design, starting again with our loops and scallops. And make it even more complex by adding an extra loop. We can loop down and then loop up and then down and then up. Just continue to push your stuff in your, creative, uh, in your creativity and your ability to build on your skills. Now we can take the same style of design and make it even more complicated or more delicate and more elevated. Start with the same loops and scallops. And we'll go two down, one up.
Now, if we want to add even more detail to this, we can go back and add some little chocolate dots. And by taking really simple items like dots and scallops and loops and building on top of each other, we can make something that looks really complex and elegant.